Good day and thank you for tuning in to this primary election candidate forum for State Legislative District 2, Position 2. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and TCTV. The League is a nonprofit, nonpartisan political organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League registers new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with the legislature. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of voting age. I'm Melissa Minharis of the League, and I'll be moderating this forum today. There are three candidates for the position of Legislative District 2, Position 2. Mr. Steve Nielsen is with us here today. Mr. Rick Payne and J.T. Wilcox did not respond to our invitation to participate in the forum, so we will be able to hear Mr. Nielsen's views today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. We're going to start today with an opening statement from Mr. Nielsen, then I will ask a series of questions, and he'll have an opportunity to respond to those, and then he'll have an opportunity to make a closing statement at the end. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, Stephen Nielsen, uh, now is your time to make your opening statement. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steven Nielsen. I'm a libertarian and I'm running for state representative. I believe that I'm the best candidate uh uh, for the for this position, uh, definitely the best candidate here today, the only candidate, um, because uh, I'm from the community, uh, I belong to the community, um, I'm just a working class uh, normal guy. Um, I had uh, um, I, I am a rocket scientist, I'm an engineer, um, and uh, this is one of these things that have, has just been a passion uh, of mine uh, is uh, um, public outreach uh, and public involvement. Uh, I sit on the the board of uh, um, uh, Parks and Recreation. Uh, commission in Ording, um, and I'm just uh, I'm stepping up uh, uh, in a in a capacity to challenge what I think is uh, a lack of uh, somebody who's uh, just not getting not getting done what needs to get done uh, for the state. Um, I'm looking at uh, the state. I'm looking at uh, um, our nation as a whole as well. There are a lot of problems that are happening uh, with the Republican Party and with the Democratic Party. Uh, um, I'm I've been a long time uh, uh, Republican uh, over the last couple of years I've seen that the Republican Party has taken a, a switch that I'm not comfortable with. So I've stepped outside and uh, of, of the party and um, I'm really challenging Democrats and Republicans uh, because freedom matters. It's not what's, uh, what's important to Republicans or Democrats. It's what's important to the people and that's why I'm in this race. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping up and um, I'm going to do the right thing for Washington State and definitely for our district. Thank you very much. Um, so as you know, there's been a, quite a bit of discussion within the legislature over the past year about how to fund the transportation plan, and uh, we would be interested to know your position on funding that transportation plan. Well, gas tax is definitely not, uh, not the way to do it. And I, I think that we're looking at the transportation uh, plan uh, different, uh, in a wrong manner. If you look at what happened in 2001 in the Nisqually earthquake, uh, it, there was um, uh, the viaduct in Seattle was damaged uh, pretty severely. And it was said time and time again that uh, if, if something wasn't done right away, uh, then there could be catastrophic, um, uh, some catastrophic uh, uh, consequences. Yet it took 10 years before a plan was even put in place, uh, and then we're, we're in a situation where we're stuck throwing uh, millions of dollars uh, at, a, at a project that's not even uh, following through. So what do you, you have to look at the, the system that's in place uh, it, it's completely insufficient uh, from the administrative level to uh, to how we're funding. Uh, everything is broken with the system. So what uh, what we're doing uh, from the Libertarian Party is we're saying throw away the entire model uh, and you don't have to worry about uh, extra funding, extra taxes. Uh, we want to take a look at local jurisdictional control uh, over our transportation uh, budget, our transportation plan. We want to focus uh, on regional areas. Uh, an area that's uh, specifically important to us is the 160 interchange that's been uh, that's been uh, incomplete for over 40 years uh, so we want to focus on that but we're not going to have some folks uh, who are outside of our region uh, who don't understand the needs uh, of our local area uh, so we want to pull that control we want to pull that plan and we want to pull the funding and the responsibility here to our local communities to give uh, give us the power to follow through on something that's been decades decades overdue thank you 
Um, we're going to shift the topic a little bit here and talk about education, mm -hmm. and in particular, higher education. Um, as I'm sure you are aware, the costs of a higher education continue to increase, and the state legislature has been working, uh, looking at that problem. How would you uh, work to reduce the burden on those seeking higher education within the state? There are, the burden lies with the universities themselves. I was actually in a, in a very deep conversation, a philosophical conversation uh, about higher uh, education in the state. Um, and in general, there are two problems, the ownership and the responsibility of the students. A large majority of the students come into the university without a plan. Uh, I would like to see that before a student gets uh, accepted into a university that they actually have a plan. They, they, um, they pre-declare their major and they know what they're going to do because if you go in and it takes two years to declare a major, if you go in to find yourself at the university, um, you, you, I mean, I know I've been there, you're kind of wasting your money. Um, so I would like to see a, a, a little bit more responsibility out of, um, out of the college students. I would also like to see some responsibility of the universities themselves uh, because they see that there's more federal funds, there, there's more money, there's more loan money made available, so the prices are going up and up and up. It's, it's unfortunate because there's, um, they're just misusing the dollars and cents, if you will, and what happens is there are folks who, um, who can't afford to go, and what they're, what they're doing with the increased cost is, is they're making it so that there are folks who just can't afford to go anymore. So I think that we need to, uh, we need to stop the price increases on the universities. We need to uh, make university more affordable uh, for everybody, but it has to be done in such a way that uh, the students have a plan, that it is targeted, and that we use our two-year colleges, our, our associate uh, level colleges, um, more so than, uh, than we're doing now. You don't have to go directly into a university. You can, uh, you can come up with your plan and you can start at an affordable level and then work your way up. I think everybody uh, is deserved uh, a trade or an education. Uh, and I think that we need to uh, come forward with a plan, but this, this one-size-fits-all system um, that we have right now isn't the right way to do it. And definitely, um, w when we have a system that is just focused on making money and pulling money because we know that the federal government's going to give more money, um, that's, that's the wrong approach. Thank you very much. Uh, again, a little shift. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your suggestions for enhancing an atmosphere of cooperation, compromise, and goodwill among our legislators? Well, being a libertarian myself, I don't fit uh, into the left or to the, uh, into the right. Uh, both Democrats and Republicans dislike libertarians. Um, and I think it's because we're doing something right. Um, we're challenging the, the statist uh, philosophy uh, that the Republicans have, that they're going to force their social views uh, on, on people of the state. Uh, and we're also challenging the statist uh, philosophies uh, from the Democrats, that they're going to force their uh, economic views uh, on, onto folks of the state. So. Um, so we have, um, I, I guess we kind of win in the fact that, uh, that everybody is, uh, is piling on us. Um, there's been a lot of question if libertarians win uh, in this uh, election, and there are 12 of us on, on the ballot for state representative, uh, who are we going to be caucusing with? And I can, I can guarantee that the libertarians are going to be caucusing with libertarians. Um, we are going to be, um, we're going to be blazing our own trail because we've got ideas uh, and, and it's outside of what the Republicans and the Democrats are doing. Um, so it's going to be our uh, intention to, uh, to lead the way. We're going to do what's right for the people of the state and we're going to uh, kind of force the Republicans and the Democrats to look at, uh, at our success and, and look at uh, the strategies that we're taking um, and, uh, and, and really force, force some change. Uh, right now, 53% of Americans uh, do not self-identify with Republicans or Democrats um, as either one of the parties. So we've got a, a really good opportunity here to say what the Republicans and Democrats are doing. So why should we conform to a system that doesn't work? Uh, libertarians are stepping out side and saying uh, what we want to do is we want to come up with the right answers. We want to free folks because uh, like I said, freedom matters. And this is what this election is about, is doing away with the old two-party system and really bringing in some fresh ideas and, and some fresh approach. So we're going to build cooperation because we're going to be representing the people and we're going to be coming forward with uh, ideas that are in um, uh, at the you know, best interest of the people, uh, not necessarily a, a political party. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, 
as I, I'm sure you are aware in the news recently, um, we have come back to the state Supreme Court decision about the legislature's requirement to fund basic education. Uh, do you think the state can fund basic as education without gutting the budgets of all other state services? Yes, I think that we can. Uh, I think, again, what we need to do is we need to stop looking at the system and trying to make the system work around uh, a broken infrastructure. As a libertarian, um, what we believe, the, f the, the core philosophy is the initiation of force is evil. And so trying to force people into a system that just simply isn't working is not the right solution. And definitely throwing money at a broken system isn't the right solution. Do we need to fund education? Absolutely. But we need to look at the structure of the education system. We need to look at the administration. We need to look at the curriculum. And we need to look at the teachers. because that's that's one thing that really gets me is folks, uh, folks use the teachers as political capital. There is no other uh, job in the entire United States that is so politicized as the teacher. And that saddens me. I'm married to a teacher. I know one of my opponents is also married to a teacher. And yet uh, nobody has come forward and, and, and said these things, um, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, that we've got to stop politicizing this job. What we need to do is we need to provide um, competition for teachers. We need to provide school competition, curriculum competition. Uh, we need to provide an opportunity for teachers to advance based off of the merits uh, of their ability, based off of their skills. We cannot uh, use this system, use this structure that just is simply broken, that discourages teachers from uh, putting forward uh, that extra effort and really, really taking charge of their, uh, of their careers. Uh, we also can't do the same thing to the students. So, is funding the is funding the main thing that we need to be talking about? No, it's the structure that's broken, and that's what we need to be looking at. Is how do we fix the structure of our of our uh, education system in this state? We need competition. We need curriculum competition. We need competition for jobs and for teachers. And I think if we pit uh, school against school, curriculum against curriculum, we're going to see a higher level um, uh, uh, return on our education system. Um. So let me ask you sort of a follow-up question because I, I think we started out talking about basic education and I think what we're hoping to find is if you have any ideas about funding, do, doing the funding. Without gutting the rest of the. Without gutting the budget, would you, do you have any ideas about that? Um, would you raise revenue? Do you have? I, I think that the state has sufficient revenue right now to, uh, to fund public education. Um, I don't think that we need additional revenue. The state has a spending problem. Uh, like we were talking about uh, transportation, we waste um, millions if not billions of dollars on the transportation issue. There definitely is money available in the state coffers. Uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, that we need to focus on is how do we stop wasting and destructive governance. Uh, when we can identify those areas, we'll find that we have significant revenue sources already in existence. We do not need additional tax uh, on, on, on folks. Like I said, the initiation of force is evil, and so forcing more taxes on folks is just simply not the right solution. We need to look at what's broken first, fix that, and like I said, the revenue sources are already there. Right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, what legislative efforts would you support for job creation in the state? Excellent, excellent. So there, there's um, a way that I like to approach this question. There's a big concern about uh, the tax and cap uh, and the, the carbon tax uh, issues that, uh, that are coming up. Um, Governor Inslee has been discussing this. Uh, um, I, I, and the answer I like to give is we're looking at uh, providing old world solutions, or, or we're discussing old world problems. We should be looking at new world solutions. If we were to focus entirely on how can we tax individuals or how can we tax companies uh, based off of their carbon footprint, we're not solving a problem. We're trying to punish uh, uh, and, uh, a segment of the economy, and that's not going to um, impact anybody in a positive manner. So uh, an approach that I'd like to say is uh, along the, uh, the avenues of the X Prize, uh, where we uh, were challenging private endeavor into space, um, if we were to have a, a similar competition uh, and say, if we could make an entire community uh, a net energy producer by some alternative means, and if 
we focused our energy and we used the government in a positive manner, uh, we would be creating jobs, we would be creating uh, energy, and we would have an entire community that would be a net energy producer as opposed to consuming energy. What that does, and, and let's just use the example of solar, uh, solar energy. In Bellingham, there's a company that produces wholesale uh, solar panels. If we were to go and, uh, and put uh, solar panels on the roof of every single home in the Bellingham area and turn that into a net producing community, uh, not only would the community um, have uh, increased jobs uh, and economic uh, market that, uh, that would be focused around um, the installation, the repair, the maintenance of, of the solar cells, uh, there would be a boon to the community because of the alternative uh, fuel lifestyle, uh, but also the, the individuals that live in that sort of a manner the, uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the solar cells on their home, they are energy independent at the personal level, at the family level. So imagine what that does. So it, instead of looking at, um, looking at the problems and, and using these political arguments and these political talking points, I want real solutions. I'm coming at it from a different angle, and this is where the Libertarian Party is really challenging this two-party system, this politicizing of every single issue that we have out there. Let's stop talking about the problems and let's start talking about solutions. Thank you. Initiative 1329 urges our congressional delegation to propose amending the U.S. Constitution to clarify that constitutional rights apply only to natural persons, mm -hmm. not corporations, and to authorize greater regulation of political contributions and expenditures. Would you support such an amendment? Why or why not? At the beginning of this race, I took a pledge that I was going to be, um, I was going to run this campaign strictly on private funds. I pledged to take no union, no special interest, no PAC money, and definitely no corporate money. I've returned over $2,000 in checks to corporations who, who, had tried to, um, who had tried to donate to my campaign. And in doing so, I let them know what my philosophy was and what my stance was. Uh, and and um, they respectfully took the checks back and then wrote me private checks and said, you know what, I actually believe in what it is that you're doing. Do we need state law to restrict? It, it may be useful to try to get the ball rolling, but what we have to do is we have to look at politicians like myself that stand up on principle and we say, this is right and this is wrong and I'm going to do what's right. I personally believe that it is damaging to this district, it's damaging to this state, it's damaging to this country to have special interests, to have um, unions, to have corporations throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, into races uh, like, our, like our own. One of my opponents who's not here to defend himself, so I'll keep it very limited, um, has got over 90% of his funds coming from corporations alone. And this is somebody who's got over $100,000 in the bank at this point. I'm going to beat this man, and I'm going to do it with less than $5,000 because I'm connecting with the people. And I'm standing up and I'm saying whether or not this is a, a law that we pass, this is the right thing to do, to keep corporations out. Because when you're taking money from corporations, and those corporations are giving money to Republicans and Democrats, and they're giving maximum donations throughout the entire, um, not just the election cycle, but throughout their, their, uh, uh, their tenure, uh, what does that say? Are they buying votes? Are they writing the laws? Are they, who, where, what is this money for? The money, the money is supporting power. The money is just propping up these individuals who are going to be, uh, uh, who are going to be pets, puppets of, of the corporations. So I absolutely, absolutely support this type of legislation, but I support it on principle. And I have stood up uh, starting in February when I started this campaign and said I absolutely, absolutely will not take any corporate money or PAC money or union money. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that brings us. Um, to the end of our questions mm -hmm. that the League has put together, but we would like to provide you an opportunity to make a closing statement today, mm -hmm. and you'll have one minute for that. I keep it to one minute. Um, the Libertarian Party is really challenging the two-party system here in Washington State. The two-party system in America is a, is a system that has been largely unchallenged for 150 years since the Civil War. It's time that we rethink our relationship with the government. Do we want to ask the government for permission in all things that we do in our life? 
The initiation of force is evil. And when you start with that basic philosophy, all things start to make sense. We start to look at the role of government in our lives. We start to look at the decisions that legislatures are making um, to, with, uh, with our knowledge uh, and even without our knowledge. Uh, we're looking at tax increases on our property. We're looking at gas taxes. They're talking millions and millions of dollars of taxes at the pump. We already pay enough. We need to rethink what it is that we're asking individuals to do in Olympia in representing us. It's time to step up and to take our government back and say, no more Republican, no more Democrat. Let's start looking at not left and right. Let's start looking at right and wrong. That's what I'm here to do. That's how I'm representing uh, this state. And God willing, on November 5th, you'll see me in Olympia standing up. It's the first libertarian uh, elected in the United States uh, since uh, 2000, I believe, um, and, uh, and representing the people, not a party. My name is Steven Nielsen, and I will be your next state representative. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nielsen. Um, that brings us to the end of this forum today. I want to thank Mr. Nielsen for agreeing to meet with us today and share his views on these issues that are very important to so many voters in the Western Washington and especially to State Legislative District 2, Position 2. I do want to mention that both uh, Rick Payne and J.T. Wilcox other candidates for this position were invited to participate and did not respond to the league's invitation. So again, thank you very much, Stephen Nielsen, for joining us today. Um, thank you, TCTV and the League of Women Voters, for making this forum possible. And viewers out there, we hope when you go to the to the vote in the August 5th primary later this summer that this information will help you make an informed decision about your candidates. Thank you and goodbye.